This is a visual video I have put together to help you as an athlete or as a coach better develop your power clean. This has been done by breaking down the movement into phases and using several coachable coaching cues. If I'm ever personally training or coaching a group of individuals, I will always take advantage of an extended warm-up. An extended warm-up is crucial to help prepare myself and athletes for specific movements required for these specific sports. When working with set players or a group of individuals consistently, you can see the warm-up can transform the whole range of motion and movement mechanics of the players. I could do a whole other video on the importance of the warm-up, but as a preparation tool, it is ideal. Integrated into this warm-up session will be many quad 
glute, hamstring dominant movements, uh, trying to stretch, increase the range of motion, activate certain specific muscles that will be required for the upcoming session. Twenty minutes of a, a session warm up would be consist of six to seven exercises, maybe of about eight reps, ten reps, generic, uh, quite lighter weight, dependent on athlete ability. Um, yeah, just just about the volume of work wouldn't be that much, but again, it's just consistent with trying to get the athlete prepared. Using this trap bar is a great piece of equipment to strip down the movement and break down specific cues that I want to relay to the athlete. In addition to explosive jumping, kettlebell exercises, I will include many plyometric movements, lateral, unilateral movements, Movements derived from such exercises and Olympic lifts, high pulls, jump squats, push pressing, power cleans, and plyometrics. I always like to include single leg exercises. Uh, it will help stabilize joints, specifically the ankle, the knees, uh, and the hips. Uh, when we were in that unbalanced uh, unilateral position. To develop strength and power simultaneously, the hand clean and power clean are ultimate variations that I use within my whole maintenance strength and power phases. Manipulating the bar into good positions before you start the exercise is a good way to work through the phases of the step, first pull, second pull, scoop, catch and drop in the bar. Just a little coaching note, it will always aid you as a coach and the athlete if you start with the bar in a raised position so it's either just above knee or just below knee to start off the movement. My own ability to demonstrate all these movements and be technically proficient at the lifts and enjoy what I do obviously then relays into the athlete from that athlete and to coach buying what has substantially been developed over time. So as now a transition through the warm up phase into the main session of the power clean. The amount of work that we can accumulate is a strategic plan in the development of any athlete that sees me working with on a, a weekly basis. The sheer amount of positive benefits that are derived from the power clean makes the whole process of teaching and coaching all the phases an enjoyable and rewarding process. Just seeing basic drills like this and continual repetition will only aid the athlete in gaining better mobility and range of motion in the hip, anterior and posterior chain. Making well use of rotation work, core stability and core strengthening exercises within this warm up. Completing these bar movements can be a great assessment for movement mechanics of athletes and all individuals. If you wanted to include the power clean within your own personal training or training when you was going to be coaching athletes or students. Being competent of lifting stuff from the floor safely and correctly from a deadlift position will be key to progressing into further parts of the movement. Of this part of the phase, we've already gone through a strength phase, so I'm quite, um, quite lucky that I can actually just focus on the latter part of the phase of the movement, uh, the high pull and the catch.
Relaying the importance of the connect with a bar, with your thighs, uh, and, and trying to help the athlete not take off his knees as you're powering through this movement. Again, to, to achieve good contact is another key coaching point within my training and, and how to lift the bar after that and safely to save you going off forward and landing on your face. Turn my head one minute and he's doing bicep curls. I'm trying to teach him the power clean and he's doing bicep curls. It has no relevance bicep curls to the power clean. That was perfect, so set yourself again. Some lads struggle with the pull. Uh, I like to throw in an explosive jump upright and trying to get a connect, but trying to have an upright shrug, so I want full extension of the elbows up until the last point. The weight is always tailored to the athlete's ability uh, and lifting capabilities. And especially on these lighter weights, I'd be looking at to be doing five sets of around six reps per exercise. If good technique and plenty of practice, it becomes quite easy to be able to complete such movements. And once we've established this mid squat catch of the bar, then and getting the elbows into a better position, we can progress onto many different Olympic lifting. Always being aware when you have a six foot two football player that you might need plates to get him into better positions. This clean from Dylan is quite poor. His foot space is quite wide. He doesn't leave the floor at any point and subsequently not being able to generate a lot of power from this position. So as, as the power clean involves triple extension at high speed and velocity, coordination of several joints and musculature needs to be activated simultaneously. To be able to jump higher and run faster requires proficient transfer of all the power through the full range of the movement. This particular athlete kept having trouble flexing at the elbows during the second part of the pull. As the elbow should be kept extended and pointed out at the sides up until during the shrugging movement. Get your elbows right under. With the bar resting on the thighs and from this position the second pull can begin. The bar should pass as close to the torso as possible. Keep the shoulders over the bar and the elbows extended as long as possible while the hips, knees and ankles drive forward. And these lifts from Luke are pretty decent. If you can take note, you can see that there's enough power being generated as he leaves the floor slightly and his feet land slightly wider than apart. Continue to pull with arms as high as, and as long as possible with the elbows moving up and out to the sides. As the shoulders reach the highest elevation, flex the elbows and begin pulling the body under the bar. As you progress into the main lift, 
it is important to load the bar appropriately. Start again. Pull. Good. Stop with them arms. Pull right up. The upward momentum from the triple extension will result in an erect or slightly hyperextended torso and head, and the feet may come off the floor. As the second pull ends with the bar at maximal height, pull the body under the bar by flexing the hips and the knees to approximately a quarter squat position. Now that the resistance has increased, the rep range has decreased. With this athlete, I've used a typical reaction cue in clapping, so his explosiveness of a reaction rather than him pulling himself. The bar should now be caught at the anterior deltoids and clavicle, torso almost fully erect. After gaining control and balance, you need to return the bar to in a controlled manner for reposition of the bar and the body for the next repetition.